main event. For that, we head back out to California. Bernardo Asuna and Teddy Atlas standing by. Thank you, Todd. And as you know, ESPN's Friday Night Fights is brought to you by Corona Extra. Here at the Casino Morongo in Cabazon, California, ready for Vanis Martirosian to take on Mario Lozano. And here is the tale of the tape. Lozano, a year older, Martirosian three inches taller. The weight, originally 154 for Martirosian, 156 for Lozano, who had to drop all the way down to 153 and a half. 29 of his professional bouts have been in Mexico. The other two have been in California and Texas. He's 4-1 with two knockouts in his last five fights, and this is only his second pro bout at junior middleweight. He said he has, was having trouble making welterweight, and now it seems he was having trouble making junior middleweight. And Vanez Martirosian, the four-time amateur champion and a 2004 Olympian, said the biggest thrill was coming back home and going to the White House and meeting President George Bush. Then that led to a solid pro career where he fought for a world title against Erislandi Lara, was badly cut in round nine in November of 2012, and that ended up in a technical draw. And he suffered his first professional loss against Demetrius Andre in November of 2013. And in that fight, things started well early for Vanez, who dropped Andre in the first round with a left hook, but then he struggled as the fight progressed. He told us that he wasn't mentally at his peak and he couldn't make adjustments because he had strangers giving him instructions in his corner as Freddie Roach was not present that fight. I honestly thought I would beat this guy with no problems, you know, and he was in there 110% ready, but I wasn't. I was basically 80%. I was like on neutral. And all of a sudden, it's the 12th round, and I was just in shock. And, you know, the result, you know, I lost by split decision, and, you know, I wasn't even my best. And Teddy brings us the fight plan, which is brought to you by Corona Extra. You ever wonder what it's like to get in a ring with a former Olympic boxer and feel it, not feel it. Don't worry, you're not going to get hit. But see the punches coming at you. Well, come with me right now and find out. Do the fight plan. Marta Roshian, well, he's the Olympic boxer I'm talking about. He likes to go in and out. You know, he sees you going back, he attack you a little bit. What's he going to be attacking? Well, he's going to be attacking Lozano. Take a look at Lozano. Lozano likes to step back, drops his left hand, and he compensates a little bit. He drops his left hand low, but he tucks the shoulder into the chin, protect, and then as a backup, he'll bring the right hand over just in case the right hand's coming. So he'll go back like this, he sees the right hand coming, he'll go over. You know what I think Martirosian has a chance to do? Well, he's got a chance when he sees him go back with that hand over. He has a chance. Well, let me show you right now. So Martirosian sees Lozano go back. Well, lead right hand, left hook. Goes right with him. Bang, bang. If he does that, well, he's going to be clean with the left hook because the left hook will get in there before the right hand ever gets back. And if he does that, well, Nice clean win. You guys are nice and clean. No blood, no lumps, no bruises. I told you you wouldn't get hit. Just a nice, beautiful front row seat for the action. All right, now what can Lozano do? Well, first of all, if he did his homework and he watched tape the way I did, he noticed that Martirosian, after he gets his shots off, he steps out, he bounces up and down. He's not set defensively or offensively. Come on, put your gloves on. Maybe you want to put your headgear on, too. That might be a good idea. And come watch. You're in your car, the light turns green, time to go. Lozano sees motor ocean, punch and step out, start bouncing, time to go. Left, right, bang, bang, step right in. If he does that, well, motor ocean, you're gonna need a little ice. And you, hey, camera, you look a little swollen. Put some ice to that camera, will you? Gonna have to buy some new GoPros. Luckily, you didn't hit him, Teddy, but. Very interesting that these fighters don't have the luxury of watching your fight plan, but Vaughn is, it seems that he did. I don't think he did. I think habits are habits. And he showed right here while he's warming up in the locker room that that habit of bouncing, there it is, up and down is still with him. It has not been corrected. That is something that has been noticed in the gym and worked on in the gym. You are what you are. And right there, Martin Roshan shows 
When he goes out, he does bounce. Erosion with a new team, a new outlook, and hoping for better results. The trunks are high, so let's get the hip line's going to be right there, right to the middle of it. There it is, right here. Ten rounds for the WBO Championship. Good luck. That's a good referee right there. These fighters are in good hands with Pat Russell, veteran referee who makes reference to the high trunks of Vanez Martirosian, establishing exactly where a low blow will be counted. And his opponent, Mario Lozano, came in overweight, said it was an issue with the scale, but I think it was above and beyond that. Nonetheless, he was training with the former world titleist in Mexico, in Chihuahua, Mexico, our move for Chico Castillo. But uh, obviously he didn't come with him, and he pays a price with a nice right hand from Vanes Martirosian, who's off to make a statement tonight. Lozano came in two pounds over, as you said, over the contact with weight. Had to lose those two pounds last night. No excuse being overweight for any fighter, but especially Lozano, smaller guy who's fought all but his last fight. He fought his whole career at 147. Now he moves up to 154 and he comes in heavy. Again, just no, no tolerance for that. No excuse for that. Right now, look for Marrochin. He's bouncing. Didn't take long. You see the fight playing right in front of you. Marrochin, when he goes out, he bounce, and that's the opportunity. Life is about opportunities. Fighting is about opportunities. That's the opportunity for Lozano, who's probably outgunned in this fight. Martirosian, the more talented guy, but that's the opportunity to even the playing field and jump in on Martirosian when he's bouncing. Catch a guy in between steps and not allow him to set up. Look at it, you can see it every once in a while. Martirosian, he reset himself. And as he resets, he bounces. He's doing it again. Those are times where Lozano needs to take advantage and attack. Also, Lozano has a pretty good counter left hook. He can step back, maybe draw him in, and then throw the counter left hook if he can get Martirosian reaching in with the right hand. Lozano gets tagged, but then he also tags Martirosian with the right counter punch. Both of these guys have power. Martirosian winning 63% of his fight by knockout. 74% of Mario Lozano's wins have come before the final bell. Martirosian likes to jump in, not really use the jab enough. He'll jump in with right hands and left tilt. He'll lead with those punches. Again, he makes me true that time. Leads with the right hand. He likes to jump in. Likes to come in waves. In, out, in, out. When he's jumping in with those right hand leads, again, I think an opportunity for Lozano to step back and kind of left hook. There's the lead right hand. But Martirosian just too fast for Lozano right there. Fast and strong from what we see as Lozano right left. I mean, well, if you want to say that Martirosian is strong, I can give some credence to that. I don't think he's a big, big puncher, but tonight. He's a bigger guy, he's a stronger guy, junior middleweight his entire career, never below 152, as high as 158, while Lozano has been a welterweight his whole career until his last fight. Solid start for Vanez Martirosian on Friday Night Fights. Ten seconds out. You hear me say it all the time, don't wait for the receipt. Right there, you saw Martirosian, he throws that right hand lead. Gets it in there, although Lozano rolled with it a little bit, but then he waited for the receipt. He looked at his handiwork, and while he was looking, Lozano came back with a nice left hook. And you know who else has been looking at the handiwork of Vanez Martirosian is referee Pat Russell. You said these fighters are in good hands, and a sign of a good ref is him going over to the doctor and saying he took some heavy shots, I'm going to keep an eye on him. And then he went over to Lozano's corner and said, be honest with me. If he's hurt, let me know. Well, we know Lozano is stepping way up in class here. We know that Matarosian's people, it's no secret, they picked him. They wanted to come back off that loss against Andre with the right guy. They feel they have the right guy. They feel that they have the big advantage. And that first round kind of spoke to that. Lozano has been on the floor before. 
Wadarosian, well, he's been on the floor in several fights. Came off the floor to win all of them. Well, there's no running here, but we invite you to watch NASCAR. Saturday at 4.30 p.m. on ESPN, the NASCAR Nationwide Series at California, just about 40 miles away in uh, Ontario. You can also watch that race live on the Watch ESPN app. Again, you can see that bouncing with Monterosia, but it doesn't matter that I pointed it out. It doesn't matter that we see it. All that matters is, does Lozano see it? Because he needs to have something he can take advantage of. I said it from the beginning. A little outdone in this fight. That's why he's in. Now, the right hand puts him on the floor. Lead right hand once again. He's been oh. down before, has Lozano against the oh. Mayfield and Mike hey, Warren okay. Six. And he's down against Vanez Martirosian. He leaves himself wide open. He goes back straight. Does Lozano, and he looks for that left hook, but he starts to throw it right in front. You throw a lead left hook in front of a guy looking for right hands, guess what? The right hand's going to get there because it's straight and it's faster. And right now, that's what Martirosian has on his mind, the right hand. Martirosian said this was a statement fight. He felt like a pro for the first time in his career. He's been with Freddie Roach, he's been with Ronnie Shields, but Joe Goosen is the first trainer to dedicate himself 100% to Vanez Martirosian, in his opinion, and he wants to make a statement tonight on Friday Night Fights because he wants that title shot and he lands an uppercut. All but two fights for Lozano. This might be even more important to know stuff like this. All but two fights for Lozano have been in Mexico. The two fights outside Mexico, yeah, you got it, he lost. So in other words, Monterosi is doing some good things, although he got caught in soon, showed some defensive flaws in the first round, but he's doing them against the right guys so far. Finishing this round with a nice body shot from Bonnie's Heart Erosion. We'll be back with round three. Well, the right hand got in by Martin Roche, and Let's see right here how. Low left hand, no recovery from that left hand. You throw a left hand, you throw a jab like Lozano did. You're supposed to cover. You don't cover, guess what? Right hands are going to crash in on your chin. Right hand by Martin Roche, and crashed in on the chin of Lozano. You throw a jab. The first thing we teach in the gym, Bernardo, is you throw that left hand out, it's like testing hot water. You bring it back like hot water before it gets burnt. You don't bring it back, you get burnt with the right hand. And he got dropped as Pat Russell asked the doctor to come in and check on Lozano there in between the second and third round. The ref you know, checked the nose. He said he could continue, although it's bleeding profusely since round one. You know, in the fight plan, we talked about Lozano. We set it up that he likes to step back with that left hand down, but usually with the shoulder in the chin. Again, left hand down, but not covered that time. Lozano paid a big price. Expecting the left to be able to land, not the right. The Vines landed the right. And well, we expect the right hand, too. Both punches <laughs> are there to land, but the thing is, when you go back, if the right hand doesn't land, the left hook will land because the right hand of Lozano sometimes travels over to catch that right hand. You see exactly what Teddy was talking about as he walked backwards with a left hand down, the right hand by the chin. But is what erosion being patient in round three. Once again, the land, the right lands. That one wasn't clean. But again, when you step back and you left low, if your chin isn't in that shoulder, well, guess what? The right hand will land. Lozano's showing the heart that I talked about in the setup, that he's got a heart. And in his mind, he has the ability to go rounds. But if he keeps bleeding with that left hook in front, and he just missed with it a moment ago, then he'll again leave that door wide open for the right hand. There's that bouncing again by Monterosian. You know, he'll bounce up and down. But Lozano not stepping in and taking advantage. There's the bouncing again. And again. We talked about earlier in the fight how Lozano was coming in here with the mindset of upsetting a very talented Vanez Martirosian. My question to you, Teddy, is does Vanez have the talent to be and to be a world titleist at 154? Well, he's got, I think, look, he's an Olympic kid. He's a kid that had 130 amateur fights 
It depends who's there. That's the answer to that question. You know, he's got a promoter, Dan Cleason, who could maneuver, who has the connections to get him back in position, maybe to buy for one again. But again, it's going to depend on who's there when he gets there. Yeah, he said he wanted the Aries Landy Lada. Lara's Rematch. a tough fight for him. Lara, that's a real tough fight. That was a tough fight the first time. That'd be a tough fight. You know, there's guys obviously out there like Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez. That's a tough fight. You know, you have to look for the right guy. Yeah, there's uh, Molina, Andre. He, he also wants to rematch again. As this round comes to an end. Both fighters are under new management. We talked about Vanez Martirosian working with Joe Goosen. And uh, Lozano is now managed by Greg Hatley, the father of Charles Hatley, who beat him last November. He became a sparring partner for the man who got the last victory over him. And, you know, how much does that change a fighter? How much does, for example, Vanez, how much does he have to be responsible for not beating Andre and Lara in those fights, as opposed to just the fact that, uh, you know, Freddie Roach wasn't there 100% for him? Come on, are you kidding me? The buck stops here. That's you're it. always responsible. I mean, you're responsible. You can make a million excuses. You're responsible for your behavior in that way. You're responsible for your behavior, your action, the success you have or don't have in your workplace. I mean, at the end of the day, you're the one who's going to get credit for it. You're the one who has to take responsibility for it if you come up short. Is Martin Rosian trying to make sure he doesn't come up short and lands a uppercut. You know, you ask him, you asked me the last round about whether or not Martin Rosian could get back to a title fight again. The promoter has the ability to maneuver either into a title or into a big fight where if he wins that fight, he could get a title fight. Top guys in the division, Alvarez, Lala, you know, Cotto, Trout, those kind of guys. I think he has his best shot against, you know, to win a big fight against a, even a Cotto who's on the downside of his career or Trout. You know, probably the best shots in those kind of areas. Not, not real easy for him in the junior middleweight division to be able to fit in there. Not a lot of soft touches there. Yeah, there are not. So the advantage, though, is that he's with Joe Goose and he works with all promoters, so he's not part of that uh, cold war that now exists in boxing, which actually nixed the rematch against Aries Landilada. The first one was a mandatory, they had to fight. The second one never came about because one of the promoters won the uh, first bid and the fight never went through. We're seeing a little bit of life now from Lozano here in round four, although the power of Marta Rosen is the great equalizer in this fight. You know, I don't think he's a powerful puncher, Marta Rosen. I gotta tell you, if he was a powerful puncher, I think Lozano would be out of there already. I think Marta Rosen, you know, he's a guy with more confidence. He's a guy with more experience from the amateurs. He's a guy who's coming off a world title fight. And he's a guy who's the classier fighter in his fight. But Lozano, plenty of heart, he's been able to handle the punches. The only one that put him on the floor was that clean right hand. But he's shown what you want to see with a fighter when he's asked to behave like a fighter. He got up, and he's been in there making an account for himself. And I give Lozano credit. He's not in there just surviving. He's in there trying to find ways to win. Round five comes to an end. Don't forget to vote on Facebook as we are very interested in what your scorecard looks like compared to Teddy's. And we're also very interested in welcoming in our headliner for May 10th, a Saturday night main event as the heavyweight title will be on the line left vacant by Vitaly Klitschko. Chris Arriola will be fighting. What does it mean to you, the chance to make history once again and it'll be on I ESPN? I can tell you right now what it means. What does it mean, Teddy? It means everything because he's, he's in shape. shape. <laughs> that's, that's all you need to do is look at him. His suit's not out to here. <laughs> you know what, honestly, it, it's... The main thing that, that I'm more, more happy is uh, I'm gonna get, get my uh, rematch, my revenge. I, I hate the way I lost. Uh, he beat my butt. I give him all that. But um, uh, back to your question, man. It's an honor, man. I, I have to do. I have to do it, man. It, I, I'm gonna be an inspiration for other people. That's that's my goal to do. Be an inspiration for other people. I come from nothing, and um, I just want to. Sh I want to show people that even if you come from, you could become somebody. Doesn't matter what it is. You could be a doctor if you want. Eight years of school is not that bad. How's your condition? You always fight honest in the ring. I always expect you to be honest out here. How's your condition going into this fight compared to what it was in the last time you met with him? 
Well, to tell you that I'm running two and a half miles a day, that's pretty good, because I don't run. I hate running. That's something that I've never done in my life in any of my career or any of my fights is run. And um, I'm up to uh, two and a half miles a day, and that's good enough for me. So you're taking on Bermain Stavern, who dropped you in the third round of your fight uh, April 2013. Then you came back with a knockout win in the first round over Seth Mitchell in September. You've got your opportunities, and this may be the last one. Do you feel the urgency? Absolutely. I felt the urgency once I lost my last fight. Once I lost to Severn, there was the urgency right away. That was, I was happy to have got a, a shot with uh, um, Seth Mitchell. And I did what I was supposed to do with Seth Mitchell. The, the, he's the kind of fighter that, that didn't belong in the ring with me, and I, and I showed it. Yeah, he was a kid with, he doesn't have the experience. You know, he started late in boxing, didn't have, he had a little football experience, did, did not, athletic, but did not have the amateur experience, and you can't replace that in the ring, and you ran right over. Absolutely. I, I always say the amateur experience is the most important part of boxing. Bonnet is showing that right now. Talk to me about what it would mean for you to be the first fighter of Mexican-American descent to be the heavyweight world titleist. Well, it, it's, it's summed up with just one Spanish word, and that's orgullo. It's pride, man. It's a very prideful thing to be a first of anything. You know, uh, um, I'm going to be in the history books. That is, my, that is my main goal, is to be in the history books and people talk about me. And talk about me in a, in a, in a positive manner. I want to win this title. I want to defend this title. And eventually, I, I, I want to go after uh, Vladimir and get the rest of the titles. Because let's talk about this fight in front of us a little bit. Look, we know Lozano's here as the opponent. He's a game guy. He's doing the best he can. But we know that Monterrey supposed to be the better guy in there. So far, he's been a better guy. But you have to take advantage of opportunities, especially if you're the underdog. You're going to pull off an upset. Someone's doing something wrong. You've got to capitalize on it. What about that bouncing? You see that bouncing, what I see with Modern Rossi yes. right in front? Lozano doesn't take advantage of it. Yeah, and then that's one thing that, that I was telling Dan is, is that's, a, that's a bad habit, an amateur habit of, of bouncing up and down. It, when you're up in, up in the air, you can get caught with either one of the punches, and you're never going to be ready to react to them. And he did get right. caught with a right, but he also landed a right of his own, and he's shown to have the heavier hands over the natural welterweight, moving up to 154 pounds. He had trouble with weight. Lozano may be paying the price at this point. You've had those issues in terms of weight. What does it do to you when you're in the ring? It slows you down. It, it literally slows you down, and you, you don't get a chance to get your second gear, your second win. You're not able to, if you see an opening, your, your reaction time is so much slower. So that, that, that's another disadvantage you get once, you, once you're trying to cut weight and lose weight. Your brain doesn't function the same as it did before. Hey, Chris. For ESPN, it's great to have championship boxing back. It'll be on a Saturday night, May the 10th. It'll be in Southern California. You've had your chances in Southern California to do yeah. it in front of your fans. You feel you owe them something? Absolutely. I, I don't only owe the Southern California fans. I, I owe all my fans, all boxing fans something. I, they need to see an exciting, professional, heavyweight prize fight. That, that's what I want to do. As everybody's seen me before, I'm a, I'm a fighter that's going to go Ball to the wall. I, it doesn't stop me. I'm going non-stop. Just when, when Bermain Severn broke my nose, it was the most excruciating, painful thing I've ever been through. But I'm not going to stop fighting. I'm going to keep coming in. There's a puncher's chance. There's always a puncher's chance. You have a better puncher's chance if you do two things. For me, Chris Alio is about two things in that ring. Not five. Two. Be in shape and move your head. Be better defensively. Be more responsible defensively. We know your game. But everyone's game when they get in that ring. You got to get away from punches a little better. You do that, you have a good chance to win a heavyweight title. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And that, that's exactly one of the things that I, that I started working on. Uh, working a lot of rope work and uh, um, a lot of uh, um, the, the ball. Just I got to get my, my head moving. It's a, it's a little hard to get used to it, to get uh, used to it, because I'm so used to just plodding forward. But your like problem, you said, your problem is you allow other guys to move your head. You're supposed to move it yourself. Exactly. That's the key. Exactly. Well, you got the advanced version of Teddy's fight plan for June for uh, May the 10th. We'll be at the Galen Center on the campus of USC. So my wife won't be happy. She's a UCLA fan, but and a UCLA grab. But that day you'll be representing all of Southern California and uh, the dream of becoming a heavyweight champion. And another man who's got a dream, they call him the nightmare, Vanez Monterosian, doing solid work against Mario Lozano. 
was down in round two, but we're now in round six of a 10-round fight. First time that Lozano scheduled to fight 10 rounds, but he's fought 12 rounds twice. Hasn't done too well so far. The right hand has really been the key punch for Lozano, or I should say for Monterosi. And the reason for it is Lozano, he steps back with that left low. You can step back with that left low if you tuck your chin into your shoulder like Floyd Mayweather does, or if you bring the right hand over to block it. But Lozano hasn't been doing that, and right hands, or they've been getting in. Right now, Monterosi just... Well, he's being like the ocean. I always talk Chris, to fighters, you know, you don't want to be the log in the ocean. You want to be the ocean, not the log. And right now, Monterosian, he's the ocean, and Rosano's the log. Monterosian making him come in into counter, and then stepping with him when he wants to go. Rosano looked like a big wave then. Martin come back with the wave of punches of his own, but you talked about the bravery of Mario Lozano. No doubt that he came to fight tonight, Chris. Not only did he came to fight, he came to try to pull an upset. He's still game. He's a game fighter. Yeah, he's not just, as I said earlier, he's not just trying to survive. He's trying to find ways. Give him credit for that. But again, the rhythm of the fight being controlled by Martin Ocean. What I mean by the ocean is he comes in when he wants, he goes out when he wants. A wave comes in when he wants, a wave goes out when he wants. And right now, you can see that with Martin Ocean. We thank Chris Arreola for joining us here on Friday Night Fights. Don't miss our special edition of Championship Boxing on May 10th as Chris Arreola takes on Bermain Stavern at the Galen Center at USC on ESPN. Action all matter in action and a lot of right hand action. Left hand's a little low, the right hand gets in. Again, the chin is up, the left hand's down, right hand gets in. I was talking about it all night, right hands. Well, Marotian, right hands, taking them to the promised land. Round seven of a 10 round fight. Our main event here on Friday night fights from the Morongo Casino Resort in Cabazon, California. So far, solid work being put in by Vanis Martirosian, who started a new stage in his career under the guidance of trainer Joe Goosen and promoter Dan Goosen. Still has gotten rid of his bad habit of bouncing on the ring, as Teddy has mentioned throughout this night. But he's been able to land some solid punches against a very game Mario Lozano. Combination for Martin Rosen who follows up. Sometimes one of the worries in a, a fighter who has had problems making weight is actually their physical endurance. And so far, so good for Lozano through seven rounds. started boxing at age 17, which is late for a fighter in Mexico. A lot of times, fighters in Mexico have already debuted at age 17. Round two by Martin Rosen. Forget about the one, two. I'm looking at the bouncer. Look, there, there, at that time, he stepped in while the bouncer was going on, and Lozano landed. And we know that Martin Rosen, we said it from the beginning. He's going to look to dominate this fight. He put in there because he figured to dominate this fight. But if you're the underdog, you have to do, you have to take advantage and exploit something that the opponent, the favorite, does more. And the thing that the favorite, Martin Rosen, does more all night long is bounce up and down. And Lozano, for the most part, has not, in his corner, has missed the boat. I'm not pointing that out to him. And even if he does it, he might not win. The side of gives him the best chance to win by taking advantage of the opportunities in front of you. Catch one of Rosen in the middle of hop, trying to off balance, make something happen, but through seven rounds, Lozano has been unable to do that. Did do a good job on stopping the bleeding from the nose, though, which started in round one. Again, the bouncing. Martin Roche in the empty throws. He resets, and when he resets, he does that. He bounces up and down. 
That is going to not have to be close enough to step in. If he's too far away, cannot do it. Round seven comes to a close between Marta Rosen and Lozano. In ESPN's Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. And in part by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live mas. And True Biotics, a daily probiotic from the makers of one-a-day vitamins. Both these fighters been doing this a long time, Bernardo. Both started young. Lozano started at 17. He learned how to be a fighter. And he's showing that he knows how to behave like a fighter still now at 26. And Marocci, pretty young himself, started when he was 18. Been boxing since he was seven. He got the nickname Nightmare when he was tearing through the U.S. Olympic trials, beating fighters the likes of Tim Bradley, Austin Trout, and Andre Berto. So he beat the best coming up and getting to the Olympics, and now he's got to do that on a professional level. Well, he doesn't change things. He's gonna have a new nickname for me, Bouncy. <laughs> Even though he's winning this fight. You want to come out clean. He's ahead in this fight. You want to come out clean. We talked about that in the Peterson fight. You don't want to get a cut and throw off your schedule. Marderosia, three fights ago, he was cut over his left eye by a head clash, and it turned out to be a technical draw. So he's been involved in head clashes. Again, the corner doesn't want to see that to ruin a good night. And Russell stepped in after a somewhat of a low blow by Marderosian, nothing major. And again, for the fans at home, yeah, it's been Marderosian for the most part, but it's been, or for the all part, I should say, but Lozano in there, not just trying to survive, trying to get something done, not taking advantage, I don't think, but he has the best chance to get something done when there's some bouncing in front of him by Marderosian, but there's still hope because Marderosian has been on the floor in several fights. But there's no hope if you don't step in and land the punch at the right spot. They was down against Saul Roman in 2011, Kasima Uma in 2010, and Nelson Estupinian in 2007. See, again, there's that move, that signature move. I don't think it's a great signature move by Lozano. He steps out with that left low instead of high. And if he doesn't have that chin perfectly tucked in, and if he doesn't bring that right hand over, well, the right hand's gonna get in. I talked about the left hook getting in in the fight plan, but the right hand's been getting in because the chin's not tucked away. Lozano able to land the jab and follow it up. He's connecting more here in round eight. I don't know about that. I just saw a nice right uppercut by Mauricio. He throws a nice good counter right uppercut. He'll step back, get you to come in if you're leaning. He knows what punch to throw. And now I'm looking for Mauricio, and he's looking for not just the right hand up top, but the right uppercut too, because he's starting to get Lozano to lean a little bit in close. Well, I didn't say Mauricio stopped landing. I just said that Lozano landed a couple shots. There he goes with the right. Yeah, but both of them being blocked there and falling a little short there, Bernardo. Round eight comes to an end here on Friday Night Fight. We'll be back. ESPN's Friday Night Fights is brought to you by Corona Extra. And tonight it's Vanez Martirosian in our main event taking on Mario Lozano. And Vanez Martirosian said for the first time he feels that he's taken care of by his team. And so far, so good, but Lozano trying to finish strong in the last two rounds. Yeah, and part of the finishing strong is that left hook to the body. He really hasn't used it, but he used it early here. I don't know why Lozano hasn't used it. I can guess, though. I guess he was busy getting crashed with those right hands to the head. And he never had the mind or the confidence to use the left hook to the body of Martirushin. But to me, that's one of the better punches Lozano has, that left hook to the body. And I would have been using it early on with a guy like Bonarosian, who likes to go in and out with his legs. Body work can take those legs away a little bit. And you did mention that early on, that that was probably his money punch, the left hook, that he hadn't been able to connect with consistency against Vanez Martirosian. You're getting hit right hands all night. You wouldn't be able to connect either, Bernardo, with consistency. You get a little bit shy about letting that hand go when you know what's coming back at you. So. Again, there's that bouncing in front of Mar with Marvin Rocha right in front. And there's the right hand by Lozano. 
I mean, at this point in the fight, I think he needs two or three good shots, not one. Khan is shaking his arms a little bit. That can either be a sign of fatigue or the heaviness of the hands. Could have hurt one, but hopefully none of that happened. Dropping his hands, though. He said he was in great shape, that he was doing stuff that he never did before with his new trainer, Joe Goosen. There's also the question of overtraining when you haven't done something before. Lozano missing wide, and now it's Margarosian missing with that left. Lozano can land the right, but then he's got to pay the price because he doesn't bring his hands back, as you were mentioning, Teddy. He gets burned time and time again. But then again, Lozano just not taking advantage of it. And sooner or later, Bartoroshian will jump in with the right hand and just hope to be first. Bartoroshian in and out, in and out. Bounces in front, looks for spots. Again, tries to be the ocean. Steps in with right hand leads, left hook. Doesn't really use the jab a lot. And then he'll step back and look to get it on the back end once in a while. That's the style of Bartoroshian. Comes at you in waves. Remind you to vote on our Facebook app so that we can compare scorecards with Teddy Atlas. In between rounds, there was different instruction in each corner as Lozano received the instructions from Greg Hadley, go out there and try to knock him out in this last round. And for Vanez, it was Joe Goosen saying, don't go out there and do anything crazy. Just stay within yourself and maybe the knockout will come. Only one thing I can say to Lozano, go land that Hail Mary. Go land that big punch. And the best chance to land it is when you see your man in blue trunks bouncing right in front of you like he's doing right now. The bounce house of Vanez Martirosian against the big chin of Lozano was down in round two and has withstood the punishment for the other eight rounds. What Monterosian does good, he controls range pretty good. Bernardo, he stays out of range, and then when he wants to get in range, he steps into range. That's really his defensive plan. Just watch him. He's not working, he'll step out of range. When he wants to work, he'll wait for the right spot. Usually when you're going back or you're covered up, and then he'll jump in. The big knock on him for me, fundamentally, is he doesn't use his jab. Usually comes in again with either lead power punches, right or left. I guess that was the theme of the night as Anthony Peterson didn't use his jab in our co-main event. And now we have Martin Rosen doing Martin the same Rosen thing. Martin better be careful one thing. This guy's still game in front of him. As I said, Martin Rosen's been on the floor before. And Martin Rosen likes to jump in with lead punches. You jump in, you can get timed on the way in. Lozano a moment ago timed Martin Rosen as he was jumping in. Last minute of this 10th round here at Casino Morongo, Vanez Martirosian wanted to make a statement tonight. He started with the statement in round two, dropping his opponent, but then Lozano has fought in game fashion the rest of the fight and catches Martirosian coming in. tapped as he tried to throw a combination, just barely misses. Yeah, now that's a good point there, Bernardo. You just said he was tapped before he threw, but he was trying. You know why? Because he's bouncing. <laughs> exactly. exactly right. And that's something that has to be corrected. I think if he's going to go all the way up the ladder. There's that bouncing again. Lozano's too far away, and by the time he moves in, it's too late. Well, Teddy, as the bell is set to toll on this fight, what are your thoughts on Vanez Martirosian's performance? Well, to be honest with you, it's the same Vanez Martirosian I've watched throughout his whole career of 35 fights, now 36 fights. He is what he is. 
I haven't seen any change in them. The things that they need to work on now is new trainer, Joe Guzan needs to work on, use the jab more, get rid of that bouncing. So it's not about the psychology, it's about the physics in the ring as we go to the break and we'll come back with the official judge's decision from Kavis High. And let's take a look at tonight's foolproof punch of the night brought to you by Just For Men. And let me guess, Teddy, it was not a job. No, it was a right hand. Right hands all night was the key for Matarosian. And that right hand landed as clean as you can land because the left hand was low and because Lozano admired his work. You don't stand there looking after your punch. You move your head. If you don't, you get hit with right hands. And now we're going to admire your work as we take a look at your scorecard. 99-90 in favor of Marta Rosian. Just that ninth round for Lozano. The fans gave round number... Which one did they give to Lozano? None. It was a shutout on the Facebook viewer scorecard. They weren't as benevolent as you were, Teddy. 10-0 in favor of Marta Rosian. The man who has the official scorecards in the center of the ring is Barry Egan. Cabazon, how about a huge round of applause for these two amazing warriors. To the scorecards we go. All three judges are in agreement. Scoring about 100 to 89 for the winner. By unanimous decision and new WBO Intercontinental World Champion out of Glendale, California, Valdez, the Nightmare. Maybe not the statement win that he wanted, but he sure got that W, gets back on track. He descended now to Todd Grisham in the studio. Thank you, Bernardo. After his dominating performance over Lucas Matisse, many felt that Danny Garcia was ready for Floyd Mayweather. But first, Garcia wanted to go to what he considers his homeland of Puerto Rico and fight for the first time. His opponent was Mauricio Herrera, who was expected to be nothing more than a showpiece punching bag. However, that turned out not to be the case. Garcia wearing the solid red trunks, I guess with some black specks on them, the leopard print. But it was Herrera who landed more punches, controlled the tempo and pace of the fight, and was busier. Garcia landed the heavier shots. Many felt Herrera should have won a decision, but in the end, it was Garcia who gets a majority decision retaining his WBA and WBC light welterweight championships. For the latest in the world of prize fighting, we welcome in ESPN boxing writer extraordinaire Dan Rayfield. Dan, let's start with Mike Alvarado versus Juan Manuel Marquez. It's a done deal. What are the details? Well, Todd, the most important detail for boxing fans is this is a very good matchup between two exciting guys. They're scheduled to meet May 17th at the newly refurbished form in Los Angeles. Uh, the catch weight's 143 pounds. But what happens for the winner is they're going to be the mandatory challenger for the winner of the April 12th rematch between Tim Bradley and Manny Pacquiao. So the winner of the fight is getting a shot at the winner of the other fight. And any of the permutations of whoever comes out on top in either of those fights will be good for fight fans. Uh, so their fight in May will be excellent, and I think the winner against the winner of the other fight should be very interesting also. Rematches all around. Well, speaking of good for fight fans, what's the latest on Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, taking on Chavez? Is it going to uh, happen? You got, me, you got me excited about that one, Todd. That is a fight also, if it gets done, supposed to go to the Forum in Los Angeles. This is a building that used to do boxing all the time, and uh, Top Rank is bringing them back in now that they've been renovated. Uh, and the Chavez-Golovkin fight would be the second fight behind Alvarado and Marquez to take place in that building. They're targeting it for July 12th. It's a very good fight. Golovkin would move up from middleweight where he has one of the titles to take on Chavez in the super middleweight division. Right now, they're very close. Uh, both sides telling me just today they're, they're close to this deal. Both sides like the fight. They're working through the details. But uh, it is a fight that I believe is going to get done, and it's a very exciting fight. How can it not be action-packed when you have Triple G and Chavez, who are both always in good, exciting fights? Someone's getting knocked out in that fight. I can pretty much guarantee you that. And speaking of knockouts, let's talk about the heavyweight division. It always delivers knockouts, and all of a sudden there's a spark, Dan. A lot of good fights on the horizon. Take us quickly through the landscape right now in the heavyweight division. Well, you're right. It's starting to perk up. You know, the, the, it'll kick off a little bit May 10th right on ESPN. 
when, when Bermain Stavern takes on Chris Ariel in their rematch for the vacant title that, that Vitaly Klitschko gave up in order to pursue his political career in Ukraine. So that kicks things off. Now, the winner of that fight is going to be mandated to take on American Deontay Wilder, who scored that first round knockout against Malik Scott last week. Now, Malik Scott maybe didn't give the best effort, but the bottom line is Deontay Wilder's 31 0 with 31 knockouts. He's getting a title shot. And you also have a very interesting rematch coming up in July between uh, Derek Chisora and Tyson Fury. Another fight that looks to be very impressed on paper. And the fact is the winner of that fight is going to be a mandatory to take on Vladimir Klitschko, who has his own title defense April 26th. So there's some activity. There's some action in that weight class. You also have the prospect of another eliminator to take place later this year between Mike Perez, uh, you know, the, the fighter that, that was involved in that very tragic fight with Magomed Abdeslamov. He's in line to take on Brian Jennings, another undefeated American fighter. So the heavyweight division right now, there's some good matches finally getting made. The heavyweight division is back, at least on this program. That's Dan Raphael with the latest from the world of boxing. Don't forget, next Friday night, we head to North Dakota for the semifinals of our lightweight tournament. It's the Boxino Championship. Don't you dare miss it.